all of us come to the same conclusion eventually. The things that's missing in digital thread in, in these companies, these OEMs that hire me, they're nearly all doing digital thread. Every one of them are doing the same thing. Every one of them are running into the exact same limitations with their clients. And every one of them are having to now reconsider the technical debt that exists within their um, solution design. Every single one of them. And if so, um, so lately I, I've been doing, I, I, you mentioned this before, I, I do a, a lot of consulting. And um, I, lately I've been doing a lot of consulting for uh, OEMs. So large tech companies, large, small, mid-sized tech companies, either people who are building solutions, people who are cloud providers, you name it. I mean, most of them are names that you're familiar with. Um, I've been doing a lot of consulting lately um, with them, it, uh, either formally or informally, mostly formally, where they're hiring me to consult. And they're really asking me questions about where the market is, like what's been successful, like what what solutions are successful for manufacturers? What are the use cases that have provided the most value? Where do we, where do I think the market is going? And then specifically, they'll ask questions about like uh, what capabilities are missing in the market, or what is missing in their solution specifically. Okay, uh, I've been doing a lot of these conversations, and um, I, I really there's. There's one big company, I wish I could say the name of the big company because it, it would give a lot more context to this, but uh, unfortunately I can't say their name. But I can, I can explain sort of the engagement and the conversation I've been having with them without giving up who they are. And I think it would be valuable to the community. So, and it would be valuable to other OEMs. I mean, this message here is for anyone who is building um, you know, solutions, uh, either technology, hardware, software, or they're building, providing services for manufacturers in Industry 4.0 in digital transformation. And here's the biggest thing they're missing. Everyone is, everyone, every, to a person, is trying to be everything to everyone. They start out building a solution that has a unique capability. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to build a time series um database with an analytics platform sitting on top and that's what they start with right and or if we're a little lower down the stack i'm going to build manufacturing execution um, i'm going to build an mes system and that mes system is going to have you know work order management uh oee downtime tracking line state and scheduling you know the core four right invariably as they start getting installed across their customers their customers have new use cases that are outside of what it is they're providing. And they have to do, the customer has to do one of two things, okay? They either have to ask the OEM to, you know, they starts out, can you do this capability? And the, and the OEM's gotta go, no, we can't. They have private little meetings and they scramble to try and develop the feature, try develop the capability in that platform and, you know, charge for it, right? And nothing wrong with that, that that's good to go. Or they have to say, no, they don't. And then, the, you know, we can't provide that capability. And then the client has got to go to another provider to get that specific capability. And then the client has to face the choice of, okay, well, do I keep OEM A for their specific capabilities and, and add OEM B just for their specific capabilities? And that really is going to come down to cost, right? And it's going to come down to interoperability. You know, how much re if I'm going to add OEMB's solution for their capability, let's say it's, let's say you're the MES company and, and, and I only provide the core four, but I don't provide, say, digital work instructions, okay, or standard operating procedures. By the way, I got to demo a really, really cool product from Australia yesterday. I got to, um, that you guys will be hearing about here soon, that has some really awesome SOP driven MES capability, like really, really slick stuff and natively integrates with ignition and stuff. Really cool. MQTT, it's all MQTT backend for the most part and web service. But, um, so yeah, I've got the, I got the core four, you know, I got, am I going to keep that vendor and am I going to add vendor B for their digital work instructions capability? And the, and it's and the customer's decision is going to come down to, um, cost 
And cost is going to come down to interoperability. Like how much work would I have to redo to add customer B is, is, or OEM B? Is OEM B and OEM A going to interplay with one another seamlessly? Not, is there the possibility to integrate the two together? But are they going to natively integrate in, um, with one another, right? And it's going to come down to interoperability. So, which gets me back to these vendors, right? OEMs can't be everything to everyone, right? At some point, you're going to be asked to build a capability you're not qualified to build, okay? You're going to be asked to add a module to your plat to your software that you're not the expert at, or you're going to be asked to build something you're not capable of building, or if you do build it, you're not going to do it very well, or that's the only customer who's going to be asking for that capability and there's no just, you know, financial justification for it. So what you really want to do as an OEM is you want your OEM to play with other software, hardware as seamlessly as possible, interoperate as seamlessly as possible. So which brings me all the way back to the beginning of my, this conversation where when OEMs are hiring me and they're asking me, what's the, what's the biggest thing missing with our solution or what do we have to change? And my answer is, it's really two things. Number one, you're not focused on interoperability with all other, on common technology. You're not focused on interoperability on common technology with all other vendors. You're only focused on your partner vendors. And you don't have to focus on your partner vendors. You could pick common technology based on open standards and interoperate with anyone who adopts those, right? As opposed to only interoperating with the, with the partners that you have direct communications with, for example. Um, and, and you're my architect and your architect can get together and we can build interoperability between our two solutions. You don't have to do that. You, could, you can play nicely with anyone who adopts open standards, okay? And number two, and this is definitely the biggest one, it's amazing to me how many vendors don't understand this, especially in the cloud service provider. If you don't have a mechanism, every so the, the way that most vendors are trying to, you know, if digital transformation is about the uh, converting digital data we have over all of our organization into information so that we can make better decisions, become more efficient, that's at the end of the day, that's what it is, whether it's human beings making those decisions or software making those decisions, um, you have to first collect that data. And you got to collect data from new technology and old technology. And the way that most vendors are doing this, especially if I'm, you know, a cloud-based um, IIoT solution, the way that most people are approaching this, or, or uh, OEMs are approaching this, is with the digital thread. Uh, they've got an edge device that's sort of a data collector. It connect, sort of connects out to everything. It collects that data and then basically run. Think of a like a lambda function that runs on top of the collection of that data that creates an object and then that object is streamed over you know some protocol amqp um, mqtt dnp3 whatever it's streamed up into the cloud as that object and then there's a data store that stores that object and then there's an analytics platform that can consume that object and you can interplay and whether i'm using if I want to build custom no-code applications, I'm basically grabbing a component that is a visual representation of the object that we created on the edge, and I'm dropping it onto a dashboard, right? This is standard digital thread stuff. That works for dashboarding. It works well in only in use cases where the point is to collect the data, stream it up, and the consumption sort of waterfalls out from the top. The big thing that they're missing is the context that gets created up there at the top. Some calculation, maybe a, maybe I take two data points from this node, from this PLC, and two data points from this PLC, and three data points from this piece of software, and I'm I, in, up in the cloud, what I'm doing is I'm combining all six of those together 
in some formula to create a KPI, some calculation that means something, some information. None of the digital thread companies have mechanisms to take that KPI and in its raw form, get it back down to the nodes where the raw events originated from. All of them, all of them. There's no mechanism to do that. Now, what they would say is, oh, well, we could use an OPC connector or we could, uh, um, you know, we could, we could put in a deterministic, you know, I could get it there if I needed to get it there. But natively, the technology that they've adopted, the, the way that they've designed their solution natively, there is no mechanism to take the context, the final context that's created at the top of the pyramid and get it back down to the bottom layer for any consumer to consume if they want it. Not just consumers I know about, but consumers I don't know about. It's one of the fundamental elements that's missing. And if you're not an architect who builds these solutions, if you haven't, if you haven't been five years into a digital transformation initiative for a large OEM, or if you haven't built an enterprise class solution, that is a solution that's using thousands of users and millions of data points and you know, you're building new capabilities every eight weeks. If you're not doing those things, this is Chinese to you. You don't understand how this is a problem. But if you've been, our whole community is built around people who've been doing this for a long time or want to start doing this and they want to do it right. And all of us come to the same conclusion eventually. The things that's missing in digital thread in, in these companies, these OEMs that hire me, they're nearly all doing digital thread. They all have some type of edge collector. They all have some type of proprietary object that they're creating on the edge and then they consume in their cloud infrastructure. And then they've got visualizations that they that visualize whatever that object is. Every one of them are doing the same thing. Every one of them are running into the exact same limitations with their clients. Every one of them are faced with their clients coming to them and asking them, you know, can you provide an, you know, uh, X capability? And every one of them are having to now reconsider the technical debt that exists within their um, solution design. Every single one of them. And if so, if somebody asks me, what is the, what's the one thing that OEMs aren't getting? We talked about this the other day. What's the one things that manufacturers are missing about digital transformation? It's that they're becoming digital companies. They're becoming data companies. The one thing OEMs are missing is that the things that their solutions create, the information that their, their solutions create must be consumable natively by uh, any consumer in the infrastructure, including the, the producers of the raw data that they were consuming to create that, that information. And, and, and by the way, it's, this is ubiquitous. You look across the vast majority of solutions providers out there, OEMs out there, they're all missing this point. Um, not all of them. There are, there are companies out there who, who get it. Um, you know, they're the, uh, the Sorba IOTs, they're the, uh, the, uh, Libres, the Libre guys get it. Um, inductive automation gets it. Uh, Tatsoft gets it. Uh, Canary Labs gets it. Flow Software gets it. Um, there's a couple of other, the, this new company that I just met with yesterday and I'll be drop. I don't want to drop their name yet, but I will drop their name here shortly. Um, they get it. Um, there's a whole, whole, you know, Opto 22 gets it. Um, you know, but if that's what OEMs are missing, I mean that, and, and if you're been in this community any amount of time, you've heard this many times, but what's amazing, I mean, I have a call today with a, you know, with the, uh, chief architect of one of the largest cloud providers in the world, right? I mean, um, you know, a, a nearly trillion dollar company, right? Uh, you know, worth hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars. And our conversation is all going to be centered around this fundamental flaw in the way they go to market. Um, and, uh, in, in, you know, this video is really centered around, Hey, OEMs, ask yourself this question, the takeaway here, ask yourself this question. How are other consumers within the, the digital ecosystem our customers are building? How are other consumers going to consume the information we create? And if the answer is only through our dashboard or only through our uh, web hook or only through our API, or they've got to consume it through over, you know, OPC UA, then 
you know, you're missing the boat. <laughs> you're, you're, you're missing the boat. If you're, if you don't have a mechanism to publish all of the information that you generate to a common broker infrastructure, whether that's AMQP, MQTT, uh, DMP3, you name it. If you don't have a mechanism to do that, okay, and consumers can't subscribe to that information you create, um, then you're you're playing the short game, not the long game, right? Um, all right. Hopefully that was valuable. Um, please hit like, subscribe, um, comment down below. You know, give us points on the algorithm and share this with anybody who might find it valuable. And I'll see you in the next one.